So uh, well, I suppose the third aspect then of our discussion was born out and played out at Wembley when Liverpool fans booed the anthem and uh, uh, Prince William was booed as well and uh, there is that very pronounced disconnect certainly uh, between Merseyside and uh, the state at large and the royal family. Jurgen Klopp was asked about it today, Tony, and I'll just play you what he had to say. Yeah, of course I had thoughts, but I think in these situations, Sam, it's always the best to ask the question, why does it happen? So I know our people that well that they wouldn't do if there's no reason for it. And I'm not here, maybe not long enough, for sure not long enough to understand the reason for it. It's for sure something historical, and that's that's probably a question you can answer much better than I could ever. I know a few fans from other clubs see it slightly different, um, but um, our, the majority of our supporters are wonderful people, really um, smart and all these kind of things, understand, go through lows, go through highs, suffer together, all these kind of things. They wouldn't do it if there would not be a reason. That's what I, that's what I know. Um, and maybe we should ask this question. But of course I realized it um, and it was um, not something I enjoyed or whatever. Um, but that's the answer. I mean, it's certainly a s- sad state of affairs, Tony. That's what you know, jumps out when you take a step back from it for a moment that this is how citizens of the country feel. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a sorry situation. And to Klopp's point, you've written brilliantly about this subject and you've said there is no single cause but a complex set of cultural and historical reasons. I mean, I would have thought really this would have kicked off perhaps in the 80s under Thatcher's government. And, you know, we've seen government papers where the... A phrase was used uh, of, of managed decline, as in let's not put money anywhere near Merseyside, said the Chancellor, because frankly, it's a waste of time. So can we just manage the place down into, well, I don't know what, chaos perhaps. So there's that. You have a Prime Minister who oversaw the Spectator article, uh, which talked about Liverpool fans wallowing in their victim status. And, uh, y- you know... I, I would have thought that you know that could be uh, the driving force but you wrote about this and, and pointed to even uh, 1965 FA Cup final that lots of Liverpool fans sang God save our team rather than laud the monarch so uh, you say in that instance it's because of the pu- peculiar nature of the place so, so Klopp there is saying let's ask them why they did it uh, you're perfectly placed to, to knit these various uh, reasons together I'll tell you when the other end of Liverpool started. The other end of Liverpool started in 1847 when uh, when uh, millions of economic, well, not economic, millions of starving Irish came into the city yeah. and changed the dynamic of it. You can trace it back. All the same tropes, all the same, all the same things were said in the newspapers. You can follow it through. I've written books about it. There are very good books about it. One by John Belchin called Irish Catholic and Scouts. And what you've got to remember is the actual word scouts is an insult. It was aimed at the poorest immigrants in the city who were having to get, get the cheapest gruel from either uh, the, uh, you know, inexpensive food carts or soup kitchens. So, you know, this was only 100 years ago. The first time scouts was mentioned in the Oxford English Dictionary was in 1947. This is a new dynamic. Right. Scouts is an insult, and which we appropriated as a point of pride. Right. And you know what? And it's so if a Londoner goes, all right, all right, scouts to me, I take that as an insult. I can call myself scouts. He can't. Right. Because it is a pejorative term that we've turned around. And when they sing, feed the scouts, well, that tells you everything. Because deep in the folk memory of the, the British people is the famine and the poverty and the hunger that existed not only in Ireland, but was transported to Liverpool. And, you know, as I've said before, you know, on, on this show, where I come from, as an Irish na- nationalist MP until 1929, you know, we, we have long been outside the mainstream of British culture and politics, you know. So it, it, it's no surprise to me. I'm a committed anthem booer. Why, you know... It's you know Chelsea fans, other fans. You know they sing feed the scousers. They love poverty. We boo privilege. You know we boo the class system. We boo uh, the establishment that has treated us like crap over Hillsborough, and which is which is, and Hillsborough isn't a Liverpool thing. It's not a football thing. It's a public safety thing. Where the sad thing is, some of the mistakes that were made at Hillsborough by the emergency services 
that was still happening in 2017 at the Manchester Arena bombing. At Manchester Arena bombing, at least two of the victims died for the same similar reasons. So they died at Hillsborough and could have been saved. And if there was a proper rigorous investigation into it and accountability and a change to the systems, perhaps those two people wouldn't have died. And it enrages me that this goes on. There's been a cover up. People are angry about Liverpool fans booing the national anthem. And they're not angry about the mass changing of statements by the police to deflect the blame for their own failings to someone else. So I, I you know, it's like I have no time for those who criticize us for booing. You know what? If you have other experiences, you do as well. And the other thing is, it opens up hell's gates for the amount of abuse over Hillsborough and some of the families of the victims have been getting abuse on social media. It's appalling. It's allowed the worst elements in society to come out of the closet and express their, their almost inbuilt systemic hatred of people from Liverpool and and we are we are a, a, we are a despised city, um, certainly in England, and um, and we know it. And we're not going to shut up, though. No, I suspect not. Uh, I'm I'm sad to say we're out of time because we could talk about this subject for uh, another half hour very easily. We, we might do it some evening over the next couple of weeks if that's okay. But Tony Evans of the Independent, thanks, Tony. Speak to you soon.